Hello, assalamu alaikum and welcome to another video. So today is going to be another cook with me and I'm going to be making enchiladas today. I'm actually trying to meal prep today which is, I don't know how it's going to go because I didn't plan for this. I just thought I might as well try to get as much as possible done because it is Monday, Isa is at nursery, Elisa is in school, so I thought I would try and, you know, prepare for the week because then I can just chill for the rest of the week instead of worrying about what's for dinner, what's for dinner. So enchiladas is today's meal. I'm planning to make a mincemeat and potato pie. So let's just see how it goes. So I'm going to be making the enchiladas now. I have prepped my ingredients a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is cut up my onion into four and then put it into my mini chopper and that just chops it so nicely. The onions are beautifully chopped, so I'm going to add some oil to my pan. So I've put my pan on to heat up, and I'm going to add two tablespoons, uh, roughly two tablespoons of oil. This is just vegetable oil. You can use olive oil if you want, but I don't know why I'm using vegetable oil, <laughs> just for the sake of it. About two tablespoons of that. And then I'm going to add my onions straight into here. Now while that's frying, I'm going to prepare my garlic. I'm going to just peel it and then crush it straight into the pan so that it fries with the onions and gives it a really nice flavor. And then I'm going to be adding my chili. I'm going to cut my chili up in my ninja again. And that's it really, so let's do that. I've got two tomatoes here and I've also got some passata which I'm going to add just for the colour and just to bulk up the sauce a little bit. So I'm going to chop those into pieces, put them in here, blend them up and then add them to my onions. So I'm going to turn the onions down a bit because they're cooking very fast and we don't want them to brown too much. So I'm literally just going to put it on a really low heat and then add the tomatoes in a minute. To this I'm going to add some stock, I've got a little stock cube which I've crumbled and I'm just going to add that and then also some salt and pepper. And then I'm going to add some water to this just so I can cook it out fully and then I'm going to let it simmer down into a thicker sauce. So that's all done. Taste it. I think it needs more salt. 
add a little bit more salt. Maybe a bit more than that. Much better. Okay, so that is ready. That's just gonna simmer away for a little bit. Now I'm gonna prepare the chicken, which is defrosting. So I don't think I can prepare the chicken. I'm gonna turn that down to a simmer and then I'm gonna just leave it on here to cook out a little bit. So now that that is done, I'm going to just wait for the chicken to defrost. I'm gonna fry that in some butter. While it's in the pan cooking, I'm gonna cut it up into smaller pieces because the pieces are quite big. And basically that's it. I've got to add some cheese and some spring onions to the chicken when it's cooked. And then I'll show you what we do after because it's hard to explain. But anyway, that is the first dish almost done. So I'm gonna just wash up and kind of sort out the kitchen a little bit and then I'm gonna move on to dish number two. So I've just cleaned up the kitchen. Now I'm about to cook the chicken, which is finally defrosted. And I'm just gonna get a pan, put some butter in there, whack it on, let it cook. I'm gonna use this big frying pan, a ceramic one. I don't know what it is. I can't even remember where I got this from. I think it's from TK Maxx. Yes. It must have been. Anyway, I put that on a high heat. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to this. While the chicken is cooking, I'm actually going to prepare my spring onions and my cheese. So I'm gonna grate some cheese, about 100 grams of cheese, and then I'm going to slice these very finely, and that's ready to add after the chicken is cooked. Also what I'm gonna do with the chicken is break it up once it's cooked a little bit more, so that I have smaller pieces of chicken, because it's better when you have enchiladas to have smaller pieces of chicken. So the chicken is now cooked, so I'm going to add some cheese to it. I'm literally gonna just put a little handful, not a lot at all. And then I'm going to also add my spring onions, and then also a few spoons of this sauce, which we made earlier. And I just estimate it. I mix it up and see how it looks. And if it needs more, I will add more. And just keep stirring until the cheese is melted and it just looks so yummy. This is the filling for the enchiladas. So this is how I like it. Not too runny and not too stiff. I'm gonna just give it a quick taste. Perfect. So this is all done. The next step is to compile the enchiladas. So I'm gonna get a baking dish out. Just clear a bit of space here. I have my wraps ready. I'm using these ones which I got from Damasina Souk. But you can use plain tortilla wraps that you get from Aldi, Lidl, uh, Tesco, Asta, Morrison's, anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to be putting it into this dish which is wide enough for the wrap. So they fit nicely into there. I will show you exactly how I do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of water to this because I want it to be nice and runny. So let me show you exactly how I put my enchiladas together. So I have my sauce here, which I will put my wraps in, put them on like that, just turn them around so that it's all covered in the sauce. You just wanna press it down a little bit. And I will use my tongs to remove it and bring it to here. And then you wanna start wrapping. So I put a spoon of this, not too much because you don't need that much about a spoon like this size. I don't know how to explain the size of that spoon. And then you wanna wrap it quite tightly and just push it to the end. And then I'm going to repeat that process until all of the filling is used up. 
If they break, it's fine because you can just roll them together. With the remaining sauce you want to put it all into the middle of your enchiladas if you don't have a lot of sauce left you can add a bit of water to it and just mix it all up thicken it up a little bit and then put it on it's fine so i'm going to add that all onto it and then i'm just going to spread it out like this if you don't have a lot it doesn't really matter because you still get the beautiful flavors all the way through because you've got it all in there as well it's just to use up the rest of whatever's in the pan just so you don't waste anything and there we go beautiful and then we are going to add a bit more cheese on top of here not too much we just want to get like a pizza effect so when you put it in the oven the cheese is lovely and melty so that is all done this is my enchiladas ready for the oven they are gonna cook for about 20 to 30 minutes max you don't want to cook it longer than 30 minutes because it'll just be overdone but about 20 minutes i'd say until the cheese is melty and golden and bubbly that's when you know it's all cooked nicely and heated up but that is all done i'm so glad that's done i'm gonna wait for this to cool down I'm going to clean film it and just stick it in the fridge until I'm ready to put it in the oven later. I'm going to eat it with probably garlic bread. I might just have it with salad. I don't know yet. You can have it with chips if you want. Just whatever you fancy. So that's all ready. I'm going to put it on the side and then I'm just going to tidy up and I'll be back. I haven't tidied up yet. Don't mind that. But I just thought I would put some pasta onto boil, some macaroni for the kids. I'm going to make them some mac and cheese because... They love mac and cheese, so I thought I'd do a few different ones and just put them to the side for another day. I'm going to put a pan on to boil and then add the pasta. Okay, so the water has just started to boil, so I'm going to add the macaroni. I measure mine very randomly, let me show you. So I plan to make three different portions. So I'm going to just fill up this one. So I've kind of like half filled them, not half, but just less than half filled them. And I feel like that is enough to kind of fill it. So I've done it with all of them. And that is basically how much pasta I'm going to be cooking because well, that's how many I want to fill. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense to me but I've never seen anyone else do this before so I don't know if it's gonna work for you because this is just how I do it. So anyway I'm gonna put this into the water and then I'm going to make my cheese sauce while it cooks. So I like to add a bit of salt and also a bit of olive oil to stop the pasta from sticking together and then i'm just going to stir it so that it doesn't stick to the bottom and then the pasta is on its way to being cooked so that's done now i'm going to move on to making the cheese sauce i've just switched them so that you can see what i'm doing a little bit better the heat is on the lowest heat so i'm going to be using about a tablespoon probably less than a tablespoon of butter and i'm also going to add a tablespoon of flour plain flour just stir that up and you should be able to notice it start smelling really like, I don't know how to explain it, it's like a buttery, flowery smell, but a kind of cooked smell. And when you sniff it, you'll be able to know what I'm talking about. So that is that base done. And then from here, all you want to do is start adding some milk. I never, ever measure this. I just add a little bit at a time and just kind of go with it. <laughs> you can look up measurements on BBC Good Food, but I just eyeball it <laughs> i know a lot of people hate it when i say that but that's just how i do it you just want to whisk it 
keep whisking it until there's no lumps in there and you can't see the butter and the flour anymore and it will start to thicken up. When it starts to thicken up like this, you wanna add some more milk. You wanna keep adding milk and stirring until you've got enough basically for your mac and cheese. So this is just finished cooking. This is what it looks like. It's not very thick, but it is slightly thick. I need a better kitchen for this kind of filming. It's so hard to film in here. So what I'm gonna do to this is add some onion granules. This just gives it a really nice flavor and the kids don't mind it and I just prefer it when it's like this. I'm gonna add like half a teaspoon and then I'm going to add cheese. And with this, I like to add grated cheese because it's got a coating of some kind of like flour on it. And I feel like it helps thicken up the sauce a lot. So let me show you what it looks like before and after I add the cheese. So this is the consistency before I add the cheese where it's not very thick, it's just quite runny. Um, when I add the cheese, it will thicken it up a lot. So let's do that. I'm gonna add a big handful of cheese like that. And then I'm just gonna push it down so that it gets a chance to kind of melt a little bit before I stir it. And then I'm just gonna stir that in and look at how it thickens up almost straight away, like amazing. <laughs> See what I mean? Gorgeous. And there is the cheese sauce, all done, perfect, ready to add. I'm just gonna give it a taste for salt. I think that's fine, it doesn't need anything. So that's ready to add to the pasta. When the pasta is finally cooked, it's taken its time. I should get the quick cook pasta because I don't like how long this one takes. It is 22 one now, so I need to go get Isa soon. So this pasta needs to hurry up. I think it needs a couple more minutes and then it'll be done. So while that is finishing cooking, I'm going to just tidy up again and then I'm just gonna cover the food and then I'm gonna go get Isa and sort some things out which I need to get some potatoes for my potato and chemo but let me go tidy up and I'll be back to show you the rest of the macaroni so the pasta is done so I'm just gonna drain it out and then I'm gonna pour it back into here but I'm not gonna pour all of it because I feel like it's a lot turn that off now I'm gonna pour in my cheese sauce into the pasta and I'm gonna mix that in and see if I can add more yeah definitely so let me show you this is what it looks like I'm gonna add the rest of the pasta I could probably have gotten away with adding more pasta to this but it's fine like this I think so that looks lovely now I'm gonna leave this like it is because I need to go and get Isa but after that I will show you what I'm gonna do with that it is a little bit later now. I picked up Lisa and Maya and Manny from school, Lisa from nursery, and we went to see some kittens. Lisa has had a bit of an allergic reaction to the kittens. Look at her little face. Look at her little baby face. Whoa. She's had some Pyroton, so inshallah she'll be alright. You okay? Oh, darling. <laughs> anyway, so we are just sorting out this mac and cheese. I left it in this pan and it's kind of just solidified so um, I need to kind of mix it up and then put it into the baking dish. Hello! Imani's here, everybody's here, we're all gonna have some yummy yummy dinner. Is that nice? What do you think about it? Imani try it. Mm, that's so good. You like it? Yeah. containers for me. I have already prepared one for today and it will all melt down because it's quite solid now because it's cold but I'm gonna put some cheese on top 
that I already grated earlier. I'm gonna literally just put cheese on top like Is that. It it's really solid? Yeah, it's because I left it out um, and it cooled down while, we were, while I was coming to get you guys. So that's ready to go in the oven now. So I'm gonna put that to the side here. And these guys are gonna carry on doing this. These are just to freeze, so Elisa and Isa can have them for dinner whenever they want. Yeah. Good job, guys. You're doing I great. I like the video now I'll show you all the food once it's cooked but I'm not going to film any more cooking because that's all the cooking I'm gonna do today but I will show you everything now so that you can see what it looks like when it's cooked I cooked it on 180 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes and then it's all cooked ready to go lovely serve it with whatever you want but that is gonna be the end of this video so thank you guys so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video bye, bye.